Clark. I'm Tony McLaren. I'm the National Coordinator of Breathing Space and NHS Living Life that are based here at NHS 24, funded by the Scottish Government but also funded by NHS 24. Breathing Space is more of a kind of crisis service that will phone when people are distressed for any given reason. And that could be men or women over 16 who contact our service once other services are closed to engage with an advisor to talk about their health and well-being. From someone who's had a very difficult day at work mm -hmm. uh, to someone who is in crisis, someone who may well be suicidal, someone who may well be self-harming, so really serious presentations as well. Uh, so Breathing Space is offering that service on a daily basis and receives at this moment in time around 6,500 calls a month from people throughout Scotland. So a sizable amount of people, Ian, who will contact Breathing Space because of the distress in their life. With Living Life, that's an appointment-based service and that's offering cognitive behavioural therapy and guided self-help to people once again who are experiencing anxiety, a stress, low mood in their life. That's an appointment-based service. And cognitive behavioural therapy, to understand is the things that are happening, the things that we are thinking are affecting our behaviour. So if we can look to change the way an individual thinks, then we can perhaps impact on someone's behaviour. And that uh, has proved to be very, very helpful to a number of the people who contact our services here at NHS 24. I had the privilege to meet Maureen many years ago, probably about 10 years ago actually, at say, the, let me think now, it would probably been a Choose Life event back there in 2004. I could be wrong, Maureen would correct me if I'm wrong, but certainly she was very much part of the Choose Life initiative which was a suicide prevention strategy in Scotland at that time, once again funded by the Scottish Government. And the way I like to understand breathing space, see, NHS Living Life wasn't around at that time, was that breathing space and Samaritans, eh, which we all know about, were the kind of practical arm of Choose Life. So Maureen, as a Choose Life coordinator, I think in the Renfrewshire area, was promoting breathing space. Eh, so we had someone who was almost unpaid by us, paid by the government, but doing very much positive work for us in the community. And Choose Life to this day and Breathing Space work hand in hand eh, with the suicide prevention strategy. As much as Breathing Space is not an actual suicide line, we find that many people contact Breathing Space because of suicidal thoughts. And it's good that people who are in those depths of despair, eh, those times of, of real worry, of real concern, can pick up the phone to contact Breathing Space, or indeed parents and family members can pick up the phone to contact Breathing Space. And I know that Maureen has gone on to become a, a fantastic singer and, and promote mental health and well-being in so many other different scenarios and have moved on from Choose Life. I think she retains that initial Choose Life foundation stone, as it were, that spurs her on with the other work that she's involved in. Uh, along with uh, yourself, Ian, as a, as a partner. And I would imagine that this initiative, the Music on Prescription initiative, has come about as almost like an evolution that over time with Choose Life and with so many maybe other personal things that have happened in her own life and in your life to get to this place today where we're saying, well, here's another initiative that can build on Choose Life, Breathing Space, NHS Living Life, We've now got music on prescription, and that's why I'm so happy to be able to support your, yourself and Maureen in this worthwhile initiative. It seemed like a long time ago now, Ian, but I remember us sitting down and uh, chewing the fat about so many different ideas around mental health and well-being. And many of the, the good initiatives that happen within the Scottish Government, NHS 24, within the voluntary sector, happen around a coffee. They happen around a table somewhere where you've got people of like mind who maybe have an embryo of an idea and can start to unpack that idea with all the, the difficulties that, that surround it as well. It's, it's almost like a wicked problem. It's something that we don't really know the answer to, but we know that there's a, 
a, a good will to make something happen. And I remember sitting here and uh, you went away with that idea that you were going to put things down in paper and start to make this idea, not just in the back of your fag packet, if I can use that expression, but certainly you know, a much more formal, documented proposal for what you and Maureen wanted to take forward and give almost as a gift to the people of Scotland. And a couple of years down the road now, you've done all the homework, you and Maureen have done all the homework, you for the sleepless nights, you for the frustration, and the, probably the worrying about, is this really worth it? Is it worth the bother? Nobody's really taking us on board in the lights. Uh, to today, when I'm happy to be able to sit here uh, with the, the full weight of breathing space and NHS living life and NHS 24 to be able to say what great work you've been able to do and I would um, certainly you know commend this particular initiative to the people of Scotland all people in Scotland young and old alike uh, those who are in work those who are not in work those who are in distress those who are not in distress and it may well be something that people can dip into at the appropriate times in their life when they feel they need that little bit of added support through, a, through music as a medium. I would see social prescribing as very much part of the, the tapestry and the backdrop a, that a GP a, can reach for whenever he has an individual in front of him or her who is in distress. And we know that to date there are many, many positive uh, examples of social prescribing. Uh, I can think off the top of my head of, of bibliotherapy, uh, of librarians throughout the country working with members of the general public on workbooks and on books of fiction and non-fiction in order to help them maybe unpack some of the difficulties in their life. I can think of a green exercise therapy where people are working with the Forestry Commission around the country and people working in, 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 in green places, uh, dry stain diking, all sorts of things and using their hands and they're out in the fresh air and the lights and, and that benefiting their well-being. I can think as well of uh, exercise referral schemes where GPs in particular are, are giving someone basically a prescription to go to the gym because we know the evidence suggests that good Health, good physical health, is as good as and complements good mental health and well-being. So there are three examples that I've come across over the last number of years that I find are, are really instrumental in helping someone feel better about their, their way of life, their way of being, as it were. Put into the mix music and prescription, and it introduces another suite of services to that day. Uh, menu of services that the GP can perhaps uh, dip into as a resource. Um, I can only imagine how difficult it must be for GPs when faced with someone who is in distress and music and prescription will be another uh, sort of valuable uh, part of the GP's toolkit I suppose. That the GP can rather than just prescribing medication which is really really important as well that part of that running in tandem with medication may well be, you know, a talking therapies, you know, some sort of psychological therapy, a, the exercise therapy, the green exercise therapy, the bibliotherapy, but music on prescription is something there as a choice for patients to say, ah, I think I think that'd be helpful for me. Maybe they've got a weight before they access their psychological therapy or their talking therapy. And this is something that the patient or the client eh, has access to wherever, not just in a GP surgery, not just in their home, but out walking the dog, out going to the shops, maybe even in their car, whereby they can access this additional source of support which in, impacts on their mental health and well-being alongside the other tiers, as it were, the other kind of layers of support. So it's not any one of these has the fullness of truth, that all of them together complement one another. So someone is on maybe an antidepressant medication, someone is also maybe receiving some talking therapy, but also accessing music on prescription, as well as accessing the beautiful countryside that Scotland has to afford. So that 
I do think it has a value, it has a place. It may not be for everyone, but that's what choice is about. We've all got a choice. And I know that I, for one, would be signing up for something like this in an instant because I love music. I don't know if you'd agree with my taste in music, but I love music and I know the music that makes me feel good. And I know the music that upsets me. And I know the music that gives me memories. And I know the music that makes me maybe feel whatever. So that every single song has a mood associated with it for me. And I would hope to be able to, to choose my list uh, uh, via this particular um, resource and to, and to dip into that whenever I'm not feeling great or whenever I'm feeling stressed uh, or whenever I'm feeling that things are not just going well. So um, I certainly commend this as a, as a valuable addition to the resources we have here in Scotland today and can only go on to be an example to other countries who may well choose to say, we want a wee bit of that as well. Yes. I'm a positive individual and these are exciting times for us in mental health. And we cannot afford to rest on our laurels, you know, because we've got this or because we've got that, then we've done enough. We can never do enough. We can hope to be good enough in the services that we provide. And I am so pleased that Breathing Space here at NHS 24 will be one of the first organisations to be able to promote this service to the people of Scotland and beyond and look forward to hearing all the positive stories that come out from this new initiative.